Hey, this is H1. We're going to be running it back with another episode talking about chess knowledge, chess wisdom, chess understanding. And hey, you don't know how it feels to have sinus problems, okay? I know I missed a, I know I missed a week last week. I was sick. I was sick. I didn't have another one. Hey, it happens. It happens. Don't don't blame H1 for this. And I didn't feel like forcing myself to do a whole dang podcast with not even being able to breathe through my nose. So I decided, you know what? I'm not going to do that to y'all. This is the number one podcast in chess right now. Okay, and maybe I'm just being a little bit overzealous about that. Maybe, you know, just to be on my humble side, I can't I can't say that this is the best, but I can say that it's one of the best. You know what? It's the best dang podcast chess style ever. Okay, now I didn't want to ruin that by having me like being in being in all of your ears, not being able to breathe. It to sound like Barney or something. I I don't want to be that guy. So I was like, you know what? Let me just take a break and come back even better the next week. And that's what I did. I came back with another banger talking about uh, stop focusing on checkmate first. This is going to be somewhat a a good topic. Um, Sometimes people don't think about this. And I just want to make a whole episode about it. I covered it a little bit within the episodes that I did before, but not... Not that much, pretty much. Not not a whole episode just focusing on this point. And I think that is an important point for people to know, especially uh, chess players who are just now starting out. So that's what we're going to talk about today is how to stop focusing on checkmate first and what you should be focused on and when to start focusing on checkmate throughout the game. Practical stuff with um, psychological stuff too. So, let's get started into the next segment, okay? H1 is back. Chess knowledge, chess wisdom, chess understanding. All day, every day, on my laptop with this blue lens glasses that I'm wearing right now. And, you know, I'm feeling a lot better. I'm medicated up. Let's get started. Hey, this is Chess Knowledge with H1, and the sponsor of today is Anchor. You know what? Have you ever wondered, man, I just want to talk and talk, and I want people to listen to me, and I don't even know where to start. Well, H1 would suggest Anchor. First of all, it's free. They have their own creation tools so that you can record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And now they have this like new feature where you can add any song from Spotify directly to your episodes. And plus, one of my favorite features, Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so you can hear yourself on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or many more stations. And then, plus, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum leader. What is it? What's the word? Listenership. Yeah, I almost messed that up. Okay. And then it makes everything simple for you since everything is in one place. So this is the thing. If you want to start your podcast right now, Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get it started. Anchor.fm to get started. Thank you for listening, guys. H1 out. This is the waiting room segment. Chess jokes by H1. And the joke of today is, if you forget the rules of chess... Don't worry. You're allowed to check. You get that? You're you're allowed to check. Thank you for listening. Back to the episode. Hello, this is this is H1 speaking here, and we're going to be talking about why do people begin with the last step. Now, I've seen this in my career as teaching and as a player, 
I say this when I'm playing beginners or uh, people that are just now starting how to play. It's people that are just now learning how to play chess. A lot of people come at me with the question like, oh, snap, is he close to checkmate yet? You, you probably heard that question a million times by like people who are just now um, studying how to play chess. Or um, I, I heard this by parents. Is my kids close to checkmate in the opponent? Or I... I, I it's just a common question to ask who's closer to checkmate when you don't know anything about chess. And to me, as H1, I'm like, man, can you really be so dumbfounded right now? <laughs> I'm probably not thinking about that. But to me, it's like an awkward question because I want to explain everything. But it's hard to explain to a non-chess player about everything that goes into goes into chess on, on the chess board so i might as well just appease that person and be like oh yeah it's close or uh, not the parent that would be messed up <laughs> that'd be messed up to tell the kid tell the parent oh yeah your kid your kid is close to checkmate no not to the parent but like to like regular chess players if i'm just spectating after it after um i'm done with my round i'll be like oh yeah yeah somebody's close to checkmate whatever it's better just to say that than to say the real answer which i'm going to explain in this episode now, I feel like sometimes people start the game off with checkmate in mind um, without a clear plan. And this is very troublesome, right? Because um, you can't start off the game with checkmate in mind. It's difficult in that way because you're skipping all the important steps of getting checkmate. And the most important thing you're skipping is basically getting the winning position first when you think about the last step first it's it's harder for you to even get to that last step and most people get this confused because i guess somebody could argue is is chess all of, chess is all about checkmate anyway so why shouldn't i think about that and this logic can confuse a lot of people who is beginning to learn how to play chess. Now, I remember studying on Chess Master, of course, on the PlayStation, on the PlayStation 2, and trying to follow along with the advanced section, right? Because there is a, a beginner section, an intermediate section, and an advanced section. And then there is like a master class section. Uh, I, I knew as a young kid, uh, I knew that I did not belong in the master section. So I went to the advanced section after I got done um, completing the beginner section, which I didn't know fully. I knew how to move the pieces at this time. I knew how to do um, an easy rook rook checkmate, queen rook checkmate. But I went to the advanced section thinking, oh snap, I can learn so much more if I can just skip the intermediate section and I can just learn about all these advanced terms like deflection and what's the other advanced terms like, um, I'm trying to think of them, uh, all, all these advanced tactics and advanced strategies in the advanced section. And, and there's like a part where you have to... Um, you have to do visualization test 20 moves ahead and it was just pretty hard i knew as a kid i was like wow i really just wasted two hours of my young life trying to figure out how to do these advanced sections when i i had no clue even at this moment i i didn't even know how to do the checkmate with the queen and king when i decided to when i thought that i knew more than i did I think it's a little bit of pride that goes into that uh, and a little bit of just recognizing, hey, I I'm a loser right now, you know, because that's what you are when you're beginning how to play chess. You're you're just a, a person who is learning how to do these, uh, learning how to do more on the chessboard, which you're, you're definitely not a winner yet since you're learning. So I was trying to force myself to understand and try to skip the learning process. In, in that chess master game, there's definitely a learning process, process because that's why it was a beginner, intermediate, and advanced section for a reason. They was like, go in this order. Please do not do this. Do not do this section first. But as the unintelligent kid that I was, I was like, yeah, nah, 
I got this. This is pretty, yeah. Like, I, I you know, I can't beat my big bro yet, but I think I can uh, do this advanced section to be able to beat my big bro. And yeah, that, that did not happen. I realized um, an important lesson that how about don't go ahead of what you know? That's like trying to draw a Picasso when you can't even draw a stick fi- a, a stick figure, right? It it shouldn't even be it shouldn't ever be in your head at that moment trying to do something like that. And I even remember trying to like desperately do like checkmate of checkmate in five puzzles, and I couldn't do it at all. I, like I'll do like one move at a time because I didn't even know what forcing moves was at that time or the concept of even calculating and the sad part was I I was able to like finish the puzzle off but I wouldn't even know how to get into that winning position afterwards so it definitely hinders um, your chess knowledge when you try to go to try try to go ahead of what you know and I understand winning is important But let me just tell you this. Instant gratification isn't the answer. Checkmate is the prize. It's the dessert after the appetizer. It's the milk after the cereal. No other way to go about it. All right. Because, you know, to all you people who put the milk in before the cereal, you shouldn't be doing that. You need to knock it. You need to calm that down. Dang, shoot, how are you going to put Captain Crunch cereal in after you put the milk in? Like, come on, you need the you need the cereal to be a little bit soggy uh, enough where it's kind of crunchy, but kind of soggy. And it, it has like a perfect combination. It's, it's a perfect balance. Right. And p- this is what people are doing. The checkmate is the prize and you got to uh, learn how to get the prize first before it's not just going to fall in your lap. You know what I mean? You can't have your cake and eat it, too. So go through all the steps to get. Uh, so this is what you got to do. Go through all the steps to get the winning position first before thinking about checkmate. And you know what? There's a whole lot of steps even before getting a winning position, which I've been explaining for a while now. And once you learn the steps of getting a winning position, learning how to overwhelm your opponent, then life will get a lot easier. It will. It it just will. And sometimes I think people have the wrong mindset about chess starting and realize it years later. And I did realize it after. let, Let me see. I realized it after probably a year later. When I first beat my bro, like, oh, snap, I could have got this done a lot sooner if I wasn't dang near doing the double fee and kettle all this time and learning. I was teaching myself pretty much. It was the computer and me and I was teaching myself. And as a kid, I'm surprised that I did it, but I did it and I learned from different people and I realized, wow, there's so much more to chess than I thought. There's so much more. And it took a while. And I'm trying to tell you right now so that you don't have to take all the time in the world to learn this, um, to learn this goal. And this is why it's important for you to have a coach. Let me just put that out there so that you don't have to go through this process of trying to teach yourself simple stuff like this. It took me months to try to figure this out. A coach would have just already guided you to this thought process anyway. And already gave you like a mindset of, oh, you got to learn this first before you do this. You got to learn this second before you do this. And he would have already or she would have already got that in, into your mind. And you would have been like connecting the dots left and right. But as a kid learning from a computer and computers wasn't as sympathetic as it is now. And speaking about computers, there's even like a, a dang... A, there's an app that was advertised a couple years ago that they even have like bots talking to you to try to cope with your situation, which is crazy. But these AIs are real and they're going to take over the world. But anyway, at the time when I was learning how to play chess, we, we didn't have none of that. YouTube wasn't even that big. And so it was just me in this in this PlayStation 2. And I didn't even know who was even world champion at that time 
I didn't know the history or the backstory. All I knew is that I needed checkmate. And if I didn't get checkmate, then hey, you know, I can get checkmate the next time. But clearly that was the wrong mindset and I had to learn from my mistakes. When to think about checkmate. A lot of people don't understand when to think about it. Like, like, do you think about it when you start the game or when you do E4? Or do you think about it after the middle game starts? Do you even know when the middle game starts? What, what is the option? What, what are the options when you're thinking about checkmate? Now, here's the thing. You can think about checkmate when you have a clear advantage on the board. That can be being up in material. Or your opponent's king is naked and your pieces are surrounding your opponent's king. Right? Or it can be, you know, after you have a winning position. It could be either of these. But to think about checkmate, you have to be... uh, You have to have a clear advantage to see the horizon of checkmate. And when you see that horizon, then the moves just come out. They just flow right through your hands and you just be playing the moves. Or if you have your if you have your mouse, you know what I mean? You'd be playing the moves online. It just comes about easily once there's checkmate on the horizon. And hopefully you're urgent. You know, hopefully you're still cautious about losing or drawing the position when checkmate is on the horizon. You can't just think about checkmate, even though that's the goal at that moment. Clearly, there's a balance. And if you're if you're confused, still, you're just going to have to play more chess games to get that experience and to understand how to achieve that checkmate. And then once you achieve that checkmate, as H1, I, I will say that you will be happy for that moment. You won't be happy if you have already beaten that same opponent for years now but if it was a powerful opponent somebody that's above your rating i can definitely say that you will be happy so when when do you think about checkmate clearly when you have a better position like why why did you even make me do this one like go to the next segment (laughs) clearly i already explained this kind of in the last segment come on come on this is h1 let's move on let's move past all this crap This is the waiting room segment. Chess quotes by H1. And the quote of today is, The game of chess is not just an ideal amusement. Several very valuable qualities of the mind useful in the course of human life are to be acquired or strengthened by it. Life is a kind of chess in which we have often pointed to gain and competitors or adversaries to contend with by Benjamin Franklin. Thank you for listening. Until next time. What are the correct steps to think about in chess? One thing you cannot forget is the three phases of the game, baby. Like learning the principles of the opening, middle game, and end game. It's important. It's important to learn about all these phases of the game. In its order. Opening, middle game, end game. If you can't play the opening, then you're not going to have a good middle game. And if you can't if you can't play a good middle game, then the end game is going to be sorry. 
and they all depend on each other. They all, it's kind of like a, a threefold cord, you know? It just makes it a lot stronger. So the goal is obtaining a winning position first. And to get a winning position, you have to overwhelm your opponent, like I explain every single time. So you have to get everything figured out. What is your main chest opening? You know what I mean? You got to get these questions into your mind. Like, do you know the plans after you're done developing your pieces? Are there any nuances you need to be aware of? Are there any traps or tricks to look out for? How do grandmasters play these openings? And then once you get into the middle game, you got to ask yourself, is my middle game all right? Am I a scrub? Do I suck in the middle game? How do I blunder pieces in the middle game? Do I just give pieces away for no god dang reason, right? Do I do that as a chess player? Is my blunders garbage? And if so, how can I improve on those blunders so I don't do it again in my next matches? Are my tactics sharp enough? What strategies can I implement in my next game? Is my calculation skills good enough? Can I see at least three to four moves ahead? I don't have to see three to four moves ahead of my opponent and i and i heard that stupid mess in the chess not a chess movie i heard that stupid mess in a movie just recently it was it was on a movie and i was like wow they really believe that like every good player sees three to four moves ahead of their opponent Uh, that is crazy to me like why do people keep on saying this crap when it's not true like get a real chess there's so many chess players out here for you to just spread these fallacies about chess but I digress. In the middle game, uh, another thing to think about is: Do I need to work on my visualization? Do I see how to cal- Do I calculate moves in my head good enough? Pretty much. Do, do I see the pieces actually moving on the chessboard? Have I been struggling lately with finding the correct plan, with the correct sequence of moves? Do I need to do more puzzles? Just things like that. And then on the end game, do I win or at least draw my end games? Do I draw too much in my end games when I have a winning position? Do I know Rook versus Rook pawn end games? If I had a drawing opportunity in a losing position, would I find it? Am I following the correct end game principles? Do I get my king out in the end game? Do I... Um, do I stress in my moves activity when I'm playing end games? Are you thinking about all this stuff before check before thinking about checkmate? Because if you're not, then you're not following the right principles because these list of questions should be in your head throughout each chess game that you're playing. Classical, of course, like when it's blitz or bullet, you you should just be having fun playing moves and stuff. But yeah. Blitz is basically just thinking about all this stuff in just a faster format and is muscle memory to most grandmasters. But in classical games, you have the chance to think about all of this at one time. Be smart about this. Okay? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta play some classical music and, and have some imposter syndrome, you know what I mean? Just act like you're, um, Acting like Lelouch or um, what, what's the other guy? L or or Light. Act like you're you're a really smart guy and ask questions. Don't forget to ask questions. You you know when kids are learning the language or learning your language, they ask so many questions: how to say stuff, what that is, um, why do people die, things of that nature. Kids love asking difficult questions just to stump a, stump us adults, right? And that's what you should always be doing on your chess games so that you can improve past what you are. Because you should be improving um, more than the person that you was yesterday, right? You shouldn't be like comparing yourself to somebody else out in the world that's a grandmaster. And I was just seeing this kid, this 16-year-old beat beat Magnus Carlsen in the game. I'm like, wow, when I was 16, I was barely playing grandmasters and this kid already beat him but you should be trying to be better than the than yourself you you (laughs) your goal is to be better than your goal is to be better than the person you was yesterday that's that's the goal and i know it took a while for me to get that out but it's out there now all right take it take it 
okay take all that all that wisdom all right i just gave you a cup of wisdom and you should drink from it right another thing take every opponent seriously take every opponent seriously by not going easy on your opponents and with you not going easy on your opponents you're showing them a great deal of respect all right don't go easy on your opponents plus you don't want to fall into the trap of underestimating your opponent too i it's happened so many times to me, like me underestimating opponents. I mean, I, under, I underestimated this one guy. I think I told the story before, just playing chess outside with a friend. He came out of nowhere. I thought he was going to be garbage, but he was actually pretty good. And he played me one game, ran away, didn't want to play me a second game. And I was like, dang, that's that's how you're going to treat me? And I was in middle school. I didn't understand how people don't want to play garbage people at the time and adults have way more important lives than, than kids so he he definitely didn't come back for the rematch um <clears throat> but anyway don't fall into the trap of underestimating even these kids nowadays man i would don't 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 do that all right just don't fall for these traps these kids know way more than what the kids used to know back in 2010 all right don't yeah that's all i gotta say about that don't pump the brakes until the game is over either you celebrate when the game is over all right make sure to go through the whole learning process learning all the strategies all the tactics and all the checkmates then your ones will come easily it's all about patterns it's all about algorithms and once you got your algorithms in then you're all set you know what i mean it's kind of like doing a Rubik's Cube. A Rubik's Cube. Didn't say that right. But it's kind of like doing a Rubik's Cube. You figure out all the patterns or all the algorithms to do it in like five seconds. And you're all straight. You're all good. I'm not saying that each person is going to learn how to do it in five seconds. I can only do it in like two minutes. But as long as you can finish a Rubik's Cube and... It's, it's kind of like that you know you don't learn the last pattern of finishing a rubik's cube only first you you learn the steps before to get into the last step all right and that's that's pretty much all the advice that i have for um, what are the correct steps to think about in chess first all right next segment I just want to give you some inspiration at the end of what not to do now there's one word that i used in the beginning of the segment that was instant gratification and instant gratification refers to the temptation and resulting tendency to forego a future benefit in order to obtain a less rewarding but more immediate benefit and we fall into this category the years that go by and this is not even taught anymore to to refrain from and people want things brought to them immediately without the work that it takes. And in order for you to benefit from the work that it takes, which the benefit in chess is to win games, you have to uh, you have to work at it for weeks, months, years before you become satisfied with your results. Now, remember, learning how to play chess is easy, but becoming a competitor takes a lot of hard work. So don't stress about it if you're losing at chess right now. You're going to be fine. You're going to be good. You're going to be swell, Gucci, all those words that they use nowadays. You're going to be pushing P. You're going to be lit. You're going to be fetty. I just, I just put like all the slang words from the last three decades. You're good. Now, it can be disappointing, right? Because losing sucks at the end of the day. Losing definitely sucks. It... it like it especially when it's an important tournament or a, an important event that you really wanted to win and to show your skills but remember this h1 h1 got you you only truly lose when you give up don't let your hard work go to waste by not playing chess anymore be satisfied with your work. At least get to 1600 before you quit playing chess. All right. 
and plus you know this is kind of it kind of compares to that investing tip too that you only you only lose money when you take when you sell out and it pretty much goes a long hand with um losing or giving up chess right so I only brought that up because, you know, I've been learning about some new stuff. You know what I mean? Hey, I got this investing book called The the Everything Guide to Investing in Your 20s and 30s. And I think it's pretty interesting. I I think uh, it should be in every wise person's book. I I mean, it it should be in every wise person's uh, back pocket. You know what I mean? But anyway, yeah, that's that's all the inspiration that I have for you to not don't ask for the immediate benefit if you're not working at it because it's not just going to fall in your lap it's it's going to take a while and just be patient and patience is a virtue right you know what i mean h1 h1 understands this you know i've been playing chess for about 13 years i understand how long it takes to even get good at it and what it takes to be at a certain point in your life where you're like oh snap i am awesome and even now, I don't feel awesome when I see people like Hikaru Nakamura. But still, though, I understand that if I put my heart and soul into a chess game, I'm going to get whatever result that I want. You can't downplay yourself. You can overcome your imposter syndrome. That's why I started this whole podcast, because I knew that I had things to teach and people wanted to learn it. And thank you for everybody, every single one of you who is listening to this episode and to this podcast weekly. And you know what? You should stay notified by following the podcast or subscribing each one because I've been publishing this podcast on YouTube too. So, hey, listen up. I love you guys. The H1 fam, my heart is out to each and every one of you, all right? Hey, this is H1. We made it to the end. I know it's pretty sad. I know because you're going to have to wait another week again and blah, blah, blah. I know it sucks. But these next few episodes is going to be awesome. It's going to be great. Um, I'm feeling a lot better now. You know, I'm dealing with that. We're going to start moving. We're gonna, My wife is pregnant, is dang near pregnant. So that's a big deal. And it's going to be pretty swell, pretty busy these next few months. Hopefully you can stay with me on this journey because I'm going to be sharing it all on this podcast. And hey, farewell. Make sure you keep your head up like your nose is bleeding. Peace.